All right, we back, we back. Hey, Texas, hell yeah. Might be the first one from Texas. Hope you had a good weekend. A few minutes till we got the open. <clears throat> we'll kind of run through what our expectation is. Right, new week opening gap here was formed, so obviously I'm gonna have that on the chart. <clears throat> As of now, really, I could, I'd like to see lower prices continue. Right, so we had this objective last week. If we were gonna continue to sell off, <clears throat> right, this sell side liquidity with this inefficiency, and notice how on Friday, right, we tap right into that. So this is a pretty shallow run here, in my opinion. Right, didn't really get too far below that. Even though it is hitting that liquidity, it makes sense to get a reversal. Personally, I would like to see another run lower. So my kind of objective would be lower prices, right? We're just coming off of clearing these equal highs. Remember, this is that daily objective. So after hitting that daily buy side, you see it's really been one-sided. We create the YouTube model, displacement, right? Respect this fair value gap here. We now have broken structure, right? Leaving behind like breakaway gaps, breaking structure here, right? We've respected this. Fair value gap here now. So you see how we're just respecting premiums. So I don't really want to be trying to call right the reversal so far. So for me, I would like to see something like potentially return into Friday's midnight paired with this 15 minute and then give us a run lower. Right, we have buy side resting here. So maybe something where here at 930, we get a Judas swing higher. Because you'll notice that this fair value gap has not been fully filled in here. I am recording, Kate. Good looks. <laughs> That's funny. I put in a sticky note on my monitor now. After last week, I'm traumatized. Can't have it happen again. I was actually so hurt, though. I was like, ooh, that was a good day. About to clip up some nice clips. Went to my recording software. Never turned on. I was like, damn, for real. Fat L. But it happens. A few minutes till 9.30. So yeah, I'd like to see something where we run this buy side first before going lower. So in the short term, right? Long term macro sense, I like lower prices. Short term sense, I'd like to see these equal highs here get ran. So London's high, right? You see we have equal highs sitting right there. Perfect equal highs. Run those close in this fair value gap and then break lower let's see what we get interested to see if we want to hold this fair value gap here or if we're going to break through it because we've already kind of done damage here so if we're going to go one-sided off the opening i could see us kind of just shooting straight up let's see what we want to get So I, I like this level here. See if we can't get up in there, nice. Yep. Okay. Should push up into that buy side. Nice. It's like right there. Yeah, I like that. So see now, right, if we're going to want to continue to run through this high or if this is just going to be a turtle soup run on stop. So right, if we close above this high here, especially if we close above this high and this fair value gap, I think that we venture into this one that we want to see. If we even get a close above, though, this old high, I think we continue to push. Yep. So that right. So just as we were explaining, closing above the old high and the fair value gap. So now I'm looking for this one here. And right, as we spoke about, this is an instance. Why am I not expecting price to go lower first before going up right here? That's because, like I mentioned, we've already done the damage heading into 930. Okay, so look, we've been trending higher. We've cleared relative equal lows at 830. We break structure. Notice the midnight level. We break through that, right? So the first time we hit it, hesitation create the order block and then push up and through it with the fair value gap right that's not random as we say this is returning into a discount back into the old order block slash midnight level perfectly and then we break structure again okay 
at this high and notice that this candle is closed above so this candle has not this candle wicks but this one closes above after returning into a discount midnight open All right so we've already done the damage of going lower which is why i'm saying especially after seeing how we cleared a short-term low while returning into the order block my right, short-term low cleared break in structure so at 9 30 Right, we've already done all of the damage that we need to do to prepare for longs. And that's why here at 930, we just get right the explosive move. So in this instance, not a Judas swing because we don't really need to. But because we've closed above, I like the idea of using this fair value gap for another push higher. So the two minute hasn't closed above. I would have preferred that the two minute did close above the buy side, however. few minutes to so that five minute if we can get the five minute to close above that'd be pretty beneficial and yeah that 15 minute i'm just going to label the volume imbalance here as well just in case we want to get a little precise cool so right now right my attention goes to this fair value gap i want to see if this fair value gap offers a support up into these higher premiums here I love seeing this, right? We create the bullish volume imbalance. We wick into the fair value gap. Now, if we could leave this bullish volume imbalance open after wicking into the fair value gap, not only the fair value gap, but what level inside this fair value gap can we expect to be hit? Well, like we often say, if we're going to close above an old high with displacement, that old high will become support. Look at that return. Beautiful. So ideally for me, if we leave this open, I would like to see us kind of run. I know this was a very shallow return into the fair value gap. But I'm almost seeing this as institutional order flow entry, and I wouldn't want price to return into it now. Especially now that we've closed back above this fair value gap. And we've made a new volume imbalance. If we can leave this one open now, that'd be ideal as well, right? Creating two. Ah, so we close this one in. This one's still open. We haven't came into it at all. All right, so we haven't touched this yet, which means we can still use it. We're hitting it perfectly now, but I would still allow an actual retrace into it. I like that, that we've gotten a two minute now to close above the original 15 here. But if we're going to classify this as an inversion, right, kind of like we speak about, I'd need to see a 15 close to fully confirm. We can kind of jump ahead of it, right, and kind of start using it as an inversion before it's actually confirmed. Because the five minute, right, two minute, one minute now is closed above. Let's look at like a 10 minute chart. 10 minute looking to close above. So, so far, right, the time frames are starting to align with the idea of higher prices 15 if the 15 can give me a close above i'll be pretty bullish into that objective up here another bullish volume and balance so i want this one to remain open All right we still never got into this lower one here so i'm still kind of seeing that's a potential entry or just a potential area too right, return into, and then find support. I mean, to be completely honest, as much as I would like price to run from here, right, it is a Monday, no high impact news. So even deeper retracement may uh, come into play here, right back into the fair value gap. If we come back into this, we could still hold it. It wouldn't be ideal for me to see, but uh, 
I can't rule that out as a possible scenario. He said, I think you're in this one. Why? What's the deal, Mr. Mike? He's just assuming. <laughs> Y'all crack me up. Y'all just think I'm in every trade. Now, sometimes I just let it go without me, brother. He said, I have the feeling. Hey, good shit, Matt. He said, an easy five. Off the fair value gap. I love it. Mr. Mike, how dare you? You would be correct. <laughs> I'm break even though. Well, on Mondays, I don't like holding on Mondays. Damn, I really can't get nothing. I'm pissed, bro. You and Matt, don't let me trade in peace. <laughs> no, I was kidding. That's just comedy that you guys know. It's almost a good sign, though. It means you guys are learning how I see it, really. So, right, I got in. My entry came right here. Like this. So, I'm going to get five handles. I'll need to get us back into this fair value gap up here. But like I said, I'm already break even just because I don't like the way that, <clears throat> right, we've created so many volume imbalances in here. But we're kind of just wicking slowly, slowly higher. So, I'm just protecting myself from a pretty, right, if we want to create an aggressive move to run back into, like, this volume imbalance, I'll be out. I'll be fine with that. Because as of now, I don't want to see, right, like this one hold, especially this one. We've already created two new ones underneath or above this one here. So like in my mind, right, I'd rather have these ones hold now than to see a return all the way back into this one. Yep, definitely, Mike. Like we've said, right, if we're creating a lot of volume imbalances, especially if we do like here, like kind of close them back in, right, and we don't respect them, that'll be a good sign that we're going to consolidate. And as we mentioned, right, we had never touched this volume imbalance. So we're back into it now. Right, we'll see if we want to use that or if we want to push back into the uh, the fair value gap lower here. So notice that, right? This one candle completely erased all three of the volume imbalances. And this one aggressive move lower closed right underneath all of them. Let's see what the two minute, what's on the five? However, now, right, the five minute has closed above, and now we have a five minute fair value gap. How long till this 15 closes? I kind of wanted this 15 to close to give me a better indication. But as of now, two kind of opposing ideas, five minute fair value gap offer us support higher prices. Right, so even though we broke below these on a one minute sense, this is kind of where we don't want to get too lost on lower time frame structure only, right? We're seeing how now we're respecting this. So what I'm actually going to have to do is watch the one minute. I have a five minute pulled up as well, right on the other screen. So as of this moment, I'm not really too sure where we want to go, right? Because you could even see price, right? We close underneath the volume imbalance and now we close right inside of it. Immediate rebalance. So if we're going to do this, actually, this is pointing towards lower prices. The immediate rebalance. Let me start clearing up some things so you can see. Right, we immediately rebalance this candle. where We would expect a fair value gap to be here and close back inside this volume imbalance. My only thing is, though, right, we could still use this fair value gap here as support. And I guess I would need to see just another confirmation. So for me, on a one minute sense, if we can get another discount now to form after coming into this fair value gap, I would still like the idea of running higher because we've just hit consequent encroachment, right? I could see that.
I'm really interested to see what consequent encroachment does here. If we hold this, still looking good for potential higher prices. We hold it, and now we open with a bullish volume imbalance. So now I want to see if this remains open. I still favor higher prices. If we're going to come in and overlap the bullish, especially close below consequent encroachment, we may actually start reversing now. Right, because I said I did lower prices in the long run. Wanted to see us go up to go down, which we did. Wanted this fair value gap. Didn't get it, right? But really, this buy side is all that we were really looking for. So if we do get a reversal now, I think I'd be okay to actually start looking for those lower prices we spoke of. Right, understanding that just fell just short of that target, less than the handle of the entry, right? So I did get stopped at break even, as you saw. But yeah, it looks like we're going to start heading lower now. Okay, yeah. So now I'm going to see if this one minute fair value gap becomes an inversion fair value gap. Right, because not only did we close in the bullish potential volume imbalance, we get underneath consequent encroachment and now we get underneath the actual fair value gap. So for me, I think that we actually use this as resistance now. And potentially aim for the midnight open. Seems like it's uh Seems like oh wait, I'm missing questions, my phone. See many times that a candle closes one tick above and the other can. Oh yeah, very true. Some wizardry at the open. Hey, guys, glad you enjoyed it, Manny. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. I'll go over it again. And look at that, right? So really, this is, I mean, what we're expecting here. So we do use this as resistance, okay? Five handles gets us into this inefficiency here. So there's the midnight level. I'm in this one on NP4, okay? I was slow to call, but it's here. So I need this inefficiency to get me five, but I'm broken even now at midnight. So broke even. Oh my God, that was quick as shit. Okay, while I'm out. Good Lord. That was light. So there was another one I was just on. This was, wasn't the... Uh, Trade of eight or trading view. This was MT4, so I won't be able to show the actual executions. But the understanding, right? I mean, I kind of called it out beforehand. If we're going to close underneath this fair value gap, I want this to become an inversion to send us into midnight and into lower prices. And it's showing exactly as I want to see. So I went short right on the inversion, right on the low. Stops above the candle that creates it, right? We shouldn't break above this candle's high. Two and a half stop or two and a half handle stop. And you just saw us get tagged out. And look at that reaction. I love catching swing lows. Goodness. Surprise, surprise. That one was a quick one. Usually I try to give you a little indication I'm in. <laughs> but that one moved quick. Literally one candle entry, second candle, TP. I took the same one. Let's go, Mike. You've seen what I'm seeing. That's what I love to hear. What's good, B? Not around much this month. Oh, okay, hell yeah. Staying busy, I see. Glad to have you when you uh, are available. But yeah, now we'll go back to Manny, your question, right? The opening. So we'll get back to the opening now that we've kind of delivered into the low. All right, this is really what happened on what day was it thursday right we start i hope you guys are starting to see how this shit repeats over and over and over all right like let's go let me just show quick because we didn't stream on friday was it thursday might have been wednesday let's see pretty ugly here still kind of getting the same thing we're right we're looking for even on like wednesday i could show you well, I was wanting us to go up to come down, right? That's kind of been the whole flavor of the past few days. Any run higher, I feel like, is to run out stops. 
Thursday, we wanted to see price go higher, right? We were looking for this buy side instead, simply raining, right? These equal highs. So we went up to eventually go down. And that's really what I was expecting here today. I just wanted to see this fair value gap. So we fall just short. That's fine, as I was mentioning. But as of now, I think that we still, I mean, let's be honest, right? What has been happening? We've talked about how we run equal highs or some type of liquidity. We come out to run sell side and then we consolidate within this range. So to me, if we don't break this low again, really in the next, we'll say like, let me see what these candles are looking like. So I guess we'd have to create a fair value gap here first. But in my head, if we start kind of like messing around here back inside this fair value gap, I think we hold this range again. Right, I'd like to see price continue to push if we're going to break lower. 300 away from it. Let's go, B. I like that. Mike, you're waiting on the five minute confirmation. That's right there. Okay. I like that. I had a 400 stop. What made you take the two handle stop? Well, just the understanding of, okay, right. <clears throat> So like I said, this, so not only, let's go back to the original framework. So first we had pulled up consequent encroachment. So we're looking at this, of this fair value gap, right? If this fair value gap is going to hold us, I want to see consequent encroachment hold as well. First candle does well. And as I mentioned, once we open with the bullish volume and balance, this right here is very telling to me. If it remains open, it gives us a good chance to run higher. If it closes in, and as I was saying, especially if it closes it in while closing underneath consequent encroachment and the one minute fair value gap, right? If I see that happen, that to me is a sign price is going to continue lower. That happens really as we are expecting, right? It closes in and gets underneath the one minute fair value gap. So at this point, this volume imbalance in my mind is kind of like, I guess we'll call it what the flip point. Like to me, right? If we were going to be bullish, this would have stayed open. So the fact that we close it in indicates to me that price doesn't even want to return back into this area, right? We're kind of done here. We're not going to go any higher because we tried to make a discount and we basically, right, closed it in, said it didn't really matter. So I'm okay with trusting that this volume imbalance and the candle that creates it will hold us if we're going to run lower, right? And that's why I'm comfortable putting my stop right above that candle. So yeah, there's a fair value up here. But really, I'm not expecting this fair value gap to be traded into. And that's because, right, we are underneath consequent encroachment. So the same way I wouldn't want to see this consequent encroachment be broken lower if I'm bullish. The fact that we are now bearish, it's the same idea, right? I don't want to see this consequent encroachment of now this inversion fair value gap be breached, which means my stop is safe being above it, right? Being above the consequent encroachment, above the closed in volume imbalance. And just above the candle that created it all. So I hope that kind of helps. <clears throat> right, a lot of things that go into it. But in this instance, it's the fact that we're really under the consequent encroachment. And if this is a true inversion fair value gap, consequent encroachment should not be breached. And as you see, right, we once again just create an immediate rebalance. Seeing this immediate rebalance also gave me some indication that that's what we were going to continue to want to do, right? Not leave fair value gaps behind. So the same way that we hit this candle's close, I'm kind of expecting that here, which is what we get. Come back up into it, that candle's close, wick lower, and now look where we're bouncing. Random level where we got out. Very much so, right? All right, Manny, I'll go back to your question now. Right, the 930 opening and why we did not expect a Jew to swing lower prior to the run higher. Let me clear out some spots. We'll leave this. So right, I'm watching as we're going into 930. <clears throat> We've already created consolidation and we clear out consolidation here at 830. And now we break structure above all of these highs. So to me, right, market sentiment is bullish in the short term. When I see us break above this high so let me drag this out getting deep we'll try to go slow here so this high is important to me because it's a midnight level okay i like midnight for power of three if we're above it i expect support 
below it, I expect it to act as resistance, right? In the kind of simplest terms. So the first time we hit the midnight and clear that buy side, it's a wick, right? So we aren't sure if we're going to want to continue pushing or if it's a run on stops to now return lower. When we see though, this next candle, right? Push back up and through now, first candle to close above the buy side, like we talk about, we're closing above buy side and, and the midnight level. And we're doing it with a new discount in the form of this fair value gap here. So now we're watching this fair value gap, right? Old high should act as support. Midnight level should act as support. Order block level should act as support. Fair value gap should act as support, right? So we have all of these discounts offering support. So when I see price run a short term low, short term low cleared, returning into the discount, perfectly into the midnight, and now breaking structure again. So what is this? Well, this is the YouTube model. Right, not the clean cut with the fair value gap, but it's the framework of it that we speak of. We clear a short term low, we break structure at a high, and we clear that short term low while returning into a discount. So at this point, I'm expecting this low to hold us, okay, and this original fair value gap. So when we come back into it one more time, and like I said, this right here was really the, the very telling key. So as soon as I saw us return into this fair value gap, create equal lows and then run these equal lows, right? And then create this explosive move higher. So within this YouTube model, what have we just created again, right? Price is fractal. Inside of a YouTube model, we have created another YouTube model. And when I see this happen, right? This is why I'm saying, as soon as this candle closed above like this, this low in my mind is protected, which is why I was confident saying that at the 930 where sometimes we get a Judas swing, right? I'm expecting price to blast because we've already picked up and done all the damage, right? Sell side. We've already cleared out the low here. We've already cleared out a short term low while returning into a premium here or a discount, excuse me, here. And now within this setup, right, we've done it again. We've cleared a short term low here as well as here. So you see that we're picking up sell side <clears throat> in a micro sense. And that is why price did not need to right come back any lower before hitting that buy side objective so long-winded explanation but right it's really that's everything that i'm kind of looking at and thinking which is why it can be difficult because there's a lot of moving parts and obviously right it's not like when i'm thinking about this it's happening quick just because i've seen it so many times so my processing ability is rather fast right when i explain it like this though it seems a lot more long-winded than when i'm just sitting here kind of expecting it to play out. Woo. All right, let me catch up now. How's the long one? He said, I usually yellow apex. <laughs> That's comedy. Fair enough. They had another that's hilarious i thought they were done with the thing with the 90 percent off sale see they're, they're 90 percent off there is always it's unlimited 90 percent off gotta be yeah no problem Manny. and recordings are going so right we'll be able to watch this live stream a few times if you need to yep brisket that's the way to do it all right Pass your funded accounts now, get your payout from that, reinvest it into more funded accounts. Infinite money glitch. If inversion fair value gaps are created and then traded through again, would you consider that a sign of seek and destroy? Yep, not so much seek and destroy, just more consolidation, Jay. Right, although they're pretty similar, they can be slightly different. Seek and destroy sees external range liquidity be targeted so right like if we're gonna have seek and destroy here we would expect this high to be ran and then all the way come back and see this low cleared whereas if we're expecting consolidation right more often than not i'm actually expecting the highs and lows of the range to hold right so if i'm expecting consolidation here i'm expecting something like this right where we kind of just chop within this range maybe get to like the extreme but never actually clear any of the external range points Whereas if I'm expecting seek and destroy, right, I'm expecting to see something where we come back for a high, right, reverse, come all the way back down for a low, 
right? So it's still consolidation in the sense that it's not really going anywhere, <clears throat> but I kind of uh, differentiate it a little bit in that way, right? Seeking the story versus normal consolidation. So like for me, right, this one minute inversion is still valid here. The fact that we have perfectly equal lows. So I like, right, I got out here. This is my final target. The fact that we made equal lows now right on it. A little sus. But we've already cleared lows. And now we're inside of this bullish fair value gap. So once again, a little bit in that 50-50 zone. Right, that's the second time this morning. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right, You can be... Uh, you don't always have to know what's going to happen. I'll say that. I feel like a lot of students get caught up in always having to know what every price leg will do. Well, that's kind of unrealistic. Right, you've seen me kind of explain when I'm uncertain. But on that same, I guess in that same breath, you understand what makes me then become certain. Right, I have certain things I like to look for. It's like for me here, <clears throat> right? I like these lows. I want these lows hit again. So I want to see this one minute inversion hold us. So I like that we held. And I especially like that we held the actual bearish fair value gap. I like that we got underneath the volume and balance right there. Could have been an entry. Notice we don't even get one though. Right, we close underneath, no return into that. So this is an instance where, right, the only entry would have came here. But for me, I'm not someone that likes taking entries like this. Like, I kind of see these as risk entries. So, like, I need more confirmation personally. And notice we've just closed underneath the one minute. So I would really expect what happened here to happen here. We've closed underneath the one minute. We should come back into it and use it as resistance before hitting these relative equal lows. So let's say this fair value gap gets left open. This would be a good actually test, right? I'm not gonna take this cause we're already good, but this is a good, like a uh, tape read slash practice of this concept and theory we just explained. Right, so we've closed underneath the inversion and we have a fair value gap here. But in this instance, I'm saying this candle's high. Like if we're gonna go short using this fair value gap, I don't wanna see this candle's high be broken because it's above now, right? A consequent encroachment of our inversion. So same way here, I don't expect this fair value gap to be hit because it's above consequent encroachment of this one minute inversion. Same exact idea here. And so far, so good. Absolutely beautiful delivery. Price is boring, fellas. All right, this shit is just over and over nonstop. Shit, leave a fair value gap here. That'd be juicy, Loki. Damn, damn, I'm not even gonna give a chance. Mm, so look at this, notice this quarter level. What aligns with that? Perfect equal lows, right? One, two, three, four, five equal lows resting above inefficiency 
and an old volume imbalance. So like for me, right, I'd like this. Trying to get five handles from there. But we might not even get it. We might just bump and run. Right, the bump and run, or I guess that's what I call it. <laughs> that's this here. Turned it into a golf term. So when I reference that, right, it means that we're closing underneath liquidity. We're bumping into that liquidity and then we're running without even giving a retracement deeper into the range. Right, so we're bumping into the old liquidity and then bump and run. And surprise, what did we hit? Oh my gosh. Does it ever get old? Answer, no. Boring, yes. Old, no. Right, there's a difference. So actually, I really so notice that we have created now a perfect equal low here. That's very weird, right? With the fair value gap sitting here. So I like the idea. I would prefer to see this actually hold. <clears throat> Had we ran this low, I would be more wary of this. But the fact that we didn't run that low and instead created perfectly equal lows just makes me think that that's some form of engineered liquidity. See what a two minutes looking like. So we actually don't have a two minute fair value gap here. What about a five? Mm. So once again, right, a little different here where we have composing things on different time frames. Five minute looking bullish. One minute, right, is bearish here. What about the two minute? So two minute immediate rebalance. However, notice we've just opened with a bullish volume imbalance. And it's really the same on the one minute as well. So I think this in my mind will be significant to me. If we close this in, I like the idea, right? Still getting down here. If this remains open, that really means that we're going to get back above this one minute while creating a bullish volume imbalance. And if I see that happen, I think that, right, we do actually come back into inversion here. So those are two scenarios as of the moment. All right, not in a rush to make a decision. So we got the five minute here. Mm, okay. So I'm not a fan of that. <clears throat> right, we've left that open. Two minute as well. Let's see what the two minute does. If that two minute also leaves it open, this low here might be uh, safe for a little bit. Damn, 25 new messages. Y'all going crazy. In fact, y'all just waking up for the stream. I love it, fellas. Dedication. Hell yeah. About to get my salary from work. Okay, B, I like that. Okay, I'm a fan of this, actually. So in my mind, right, because we have hit the high of this fair value gap on the one minute, and now we have closed underneath, this fair value gap should be balanced. So if we're going to run lower... Right, this high should hold. If we get above it, that's why I think that we're going to come back into this fair value gap here. And right, we immediately get right back above it. So I think we do actually push into this fair value gap here. So back into the consequent encroachment, right? Equilibrium of the actual range. That wouldn't be surprising to see a return into that. Right, this fair value gap is perfectly aligned with the equilibrium here of this range. 
So it makes sense for price to want to gravitate back into that. We've hit the midnight level. Midnight can act as resistance. So I'll first want to see if price even wants to get above that midnight level. Look at that beautiful delivery. And notice we volume and balance into it. So I'm getting pretty bullish vibes. I do think we want to go here. This one. What you got here, buddy? Jeez. Oh, that's a fire short, Matt. Did you take partials? I just saw it. I know partials. Are you a partial or not? Some people don't take partials. That's how it be. Well, there we go. All right, so we blast right up back into it. I had a limit here. I missed it. I'm removing it. I had a limit right on the midnight level. I was hoping that this candle hit this. Gave slight hesitation and then came back into the midnight to enter me. But you see how it absolutely did not even hesitate here. And now we're back above the original. So I think we go back up. Mm, what's five? Kind of like this, to be honest. Old inversion. Stop underneath inversion. See if we close above. Oh yeah, we're gonna close above that. We're hitting this old right here. So let's see if we can. Who's that in the background? Oh, someone talking? I can't hear him. He said some baby. I'm weak. I must have him muted. I could serve him mute him here if you He said some baby. Some baby. Get your baby. You're good, Antonio. Babies be babying, brother. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Let's see if we can close above. That'd be ideal. I'm long. Like this. I just got long. At the volume imbalance. So I need five handles. Which would take me, my stop is now underneath this candle. So a tight stop. So basically break even actually. I got long 45.20. It's actually a great, oh wait, I lied, I lied. I was like, that's a great entry. 45, oh, 45.21. Hell yeah. So at this point, we're like this. Stop is right there. See if we get stopped out. And right for my volume balance entries, this is kind of how I treat them. It's like, I don't like seeing the candle. If I'm going to enter using a volume imbalance, so that's what this was, right? Entering as soon as this candle hits. I don't want to see the candle that, right, creates it be broken. So this candle confirms it. I'm not trying to see this candle's low be breached. We could come back into this fair value gap. If we do, that's just where I, uh, right, I'm not involved. <clears throat> and I'm okay not being in every move. Usually I would say that I'm closing a position as soon as this volume bounce gets closed in. But this is slightly different just because we have this inversion here. So I'm going to give the volume imbalance a little bit of leeway just because we do have the actual inversion that can still support us. 
and notice that even though we close below it, like I speak of, right, what happened? As soon as we close under it, we immediately opened with a volume of bounce back inside of it. So I'm just going to see if we can't hold that. Oof, real close to my break even. Let's see if we get tapped. Still in. Just barely. If this candle closes, if this candle holds this volume bounce here, I should just go ahead and close it manually. I'm fine with not holding it. We could still run, right? This will simply be hesitating here. But I just don't like the fact that we now have these two equal lows right by this volume or this fair value gap. So if this candle cannot close back above the volume imbalance, we're just going to close. So five seconds. So we close there. So close right at break even. 45.21 was where I got in. This candle closed at 45.21. So we got out right at 45.21 there. So break even one. Now let's see really if we use this. Right, I could still see us using this one. Bounce from here. I'm going to go to a two minute. Mm. Yeah, now we're kind of putting in that ugly delivery. I'm going to clear up this higher time frame, 15. All right, we're obviously inside of that. We're going to go here. Here like this. Low high. Break. Mm, I need to see, is what a BPR mic? If we can't get back above here, back to bed. Yep. Good call, Brisk. We'll probably wrap it up here shortly. Like we said, right, Monday, no high impact news, so. Not missing out on too much, my dog. Take care. We'll be back tomorrow at the same time. So I'll see you then. But I'm up, but I'm up. I'm long again at the bottom of this inversion here. Ah, I know I got a bad feel. Damn. So I'm long here at 45, 21, and three quarters. So if we can get 45, 26, and three quarters, we'll go ahead and wrap it up.
let us see if we can't oof my stops to break even again i just don't like how price is moving so i'm going to be rather quick for uh to protect the positions here this morning if i can hello so cool and yeah i'll actually go final tp at, at these equal highs here If we can get there. If not, right, I'm slightly in profit already, so. And then I'll just kind of show you quickly the uh, the second entry. See if we get stopped this time. Getting pretty close. So we got back in right right at that inversion. Like I mentioned, got in here the first time. Closed it as soon as that candle closed back underneath the volume and balance. Got back in when we trade back up and through, right? What I'm really looking at is this. That's what I'm getting in at. So we got back up and through both of these, this set of volume imbalances with this candle. So as soon as this candle hits this lower one, I'm going in, right? Enter in there. Like I said, would like to see five handles. Could have closed at four. It's whatever. Already had a winner this morning. So we either, right, stop's already in profit. So it's one of those things where we'll go, we'll actually give it, we'll go like right at break even. I'm fine if we get broken even here. Because we do have this baby ass fair value gap. I think if we get into it, we probably go through it, but on the off chance that we do want to hold there, I'll give my stop just a little bit extra room, just in case. Back to bang bang. Let us see what do we get. So, so far, if we get broken even again, this will be three break evens on the morning or actually the first one was barely in profit so i don't know if we'll count that go ahead price get up there get up there get up there Don't want to be too greedy, so I think I'm actually just going to close with four. So if we run this high, right, equal highs. If we run this high, we'll close it. Right there. So I'm out. You might still want to see these, these highs here. But like I said, this is where I got out to where my final target was half a handle, right? No need trying to fight for that half handle, it's goofy. I like that we have this volume imbalance, which is why I was okay just going out. Mm -hmm. And you see, right, my stop held us well. So I'm not scared of my stop being hit because it's in logical areas, right? Sure, we keep coming back down, but when I see this, I'm not worried of price, right, ripping into my stop. So I guess we'll share, change. So this will be, this will be all for me today, really. Three back even, that's kind of my sign to chill out, right? We were really right on the direction all three times. Just when it's enabled to partake. So first one, right, volume balance entry. Stopped out slightly in profit. Once we broke structure here, move stop to this swing point, get stopped on that candle. Same thing here, volume balance entry. Right, more of an inversion, hitting at the low of the inversion. And like I said, once this candle closes again underneath the volume and balance, we just close. So manually closing for no loss. And then this one was the actual winner, right? So entering on the volume and balance again. And as we said, got out as we ran that high. Exiting on a swing high. Love that. It's usually how it goes. If I'm hitting targets, my targets will usually be swing points. 
That's why I love seeing that. Just pass. Oh my god, brother. Let's go, baby. That's hype. Hit him with these. I'm a golfer now. Hit you with the golf clap. Could we treat the move down as a Judas swing for higher prices? Can we treat the move down? This, are you asking this move? Matt, which move? This move? Five. Oh, damn, I'm missing some of y'all questions. My fault. Hold on, Matt. I'll be right back to you. Chris, the 10 o'clock fair value gap was not ideal for shorts because it was 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Right, so this one here, this fair value gap. Ideally, right, I would have liked to see it hold. So we were watching this at first, kind of monitoring if we wanted to or not. This one just didn't work because, right, we obviously have higher targets. So we had cleared liquidity once. We came out to clear the equal lows again. And we were really running into like the breaker, low, high, low, low. Right, I wanted us to see us, or I wanted to see price run these equal lows. Instead, we create perfectly equal lows. If we had ran this even one tick, I would not have been looking at this fair value gap. The only reason I was is because of the equal lows. But this isn't one that I'm instantly shorting, right, for that thing I mentioned. Because if I had seen these run, if I had seen this candle run these equal lows, I would not trust this fair value gap. The only thing that made me even think about it was the fact that we had equal lows first. So I really need to monitor it. And right, good thing we did because... You see us kind of use it once, but we push right back up and through it. And this is just an instance where we have, right, buy side here, we have higher premiums. So this was kind of low in that, even though it's still a premium because it's an old low and it's a fair value gap. From this high to low, right, it's pretty low in the range. And it's Monday. So we can kind of expect just that, that choppiness. Like if this was a true trending environment, this is when I would really kind of expect this to happen. But if the market was trending, we would have seen this candle and this candle close underneath this low. Right? Boom. So there's our buy side, right? And we should get our volume and balance and our higher fair value gap up there. Is that drop from around 955, kind of a classic silver bullet. All right, let me go back to you now. 955 is here. Is to drop around 955, a classic. Now, so the silver bullet, right, his, the way he teaches it, forms between 10 and 11. So the silver bullet here, right, in this, let me just pull up the time. 10 o'clock. Boop. To 11. Right, we should usually be coming from some form of liquidity. We should have a fair value gap and we should be reaching for some form of liquidity. So let's run through so far. Right, right at 10 o'clock, notice what happens. Right at 10 o'clock, oh, pause. Who's that? And yeah, whatever. Right at 10 o'clock, what do we do? We run that equal low. So we're already starting that macro, right? Not random. We run that low, we create fair value gaps. And we have, right, a buy side pull to target. So the silver bullet really comes here. This was the silver bullet for today. The fair value gap up into our buy side objective here. And look at that. We just wicked into the volume and balance, wick into the fair value gap. Beautiful. See if price doesn't want to run up and through that. Let's paper trade it. I right, don't want to trade live anymore. Actually, that might be a total soup.
had this candle closed because right we wick all three of those levels we were looking at the buy side volume imbalance and the fair value gap leaving this fair value gap here but notice how price is not getting above the old high it's wicking it so because of that right i'm not i'm watching this one i want this to hold but i'm not going to enter had this candle right you're kind of learning my i guess entry rules for a live account anyways paper trade i'll enter this paper trade all day just to kind of right gauge price but i'm not entering this on a live account because of the fact that we're simply wicking these highs as i said if i would have seen this candle actually close inside this fair value gap while leaving this one right i'm okay entering here but because this is simply a run on stops this is how we kind of invalidate this fair value gap is trying to use it to continue to push higher. All right, back to you now, Matt. Jeez, got to catch up. Five minute move down as the Judas. This or this. If you're saying this, I would say, yeah, you can say that. Which is, I don't know if, like, it's kind of tough because, right, for me, a Judas has to take place at kind of a certain time of day. So if, like, if this was the 930 candle and the 930 candle went down, then I would be like, okay, yeah, that's a Judas for higher prices. Whereas sometimes, right, not every move, I guess, is an actual Judas. Sometimes we're just kind of seeking to destroy, right, looking for liquidity. Because like if I was going to classify this as a Judas swing, that means that I would think price is going to continue to run rather aggressively. Whereas if I'm being honest, I think that we just kind of consolidate here. Like I don't see us breaking this range. If anything, I see us getting stopped at this midnight open. So to me, right, it's not necessarily a Judas swing, just more of like a seek and destroy to where we clear lows. Like, and now that we've cleared this high, I would like to see us come back into this range. My executions in NQ. Sure. Okay. Hell yeah. And that's quick too. And it works. It'll be fourth. Your fourth funded account. Oh my god, brother. Good shit, bro. So that'd be an instance where you'd rather see how price reacts and get in at the next PD array. Yes, Chris. Correct. Right. If you're referencing this fair value gap we just spoke about, that is correct. Like at this point, let's say that now we start closing above all of these premiums here. Now I would actually be okay looking to see if this fair value gap doesn't hold us. But right, we need to get above it first. So I'm not trying to do it now. Because we could easily hold this bearish fair value gap. Right, this inversion and continue to push lower. <laughs> right as we say it. let's give a little demo trade action here let's try to get it back into the range a little demo ball action That is a terrible issue. Oh shit. Getting a call, fellas. One sec, sorry.
right, we back, we back, fellas. This is my fault, my fault. <clears throat> Oh, someone talking here. Can we get him? All right, where is so well? I was gonna go stop here. Forties. I actually don't like though the volume and balance right there already. So we're gonna go like that. Once we hit it, just hit it. Boom. Close. And if we give me another opportunity, I'll just add those back on. But I don't like the. The volume and balance, especially after Wiccan here like that. Shoot it up. No, this is obviously very low probability, high resistance type shit. Which is why we are in the demo playground. Like if we're going to kind of seek and destroy right, this is kind of jumping back to my eye. The untouched inefficiency here. Like that. And mm -mm 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 -mm. has not, yeah, and Q hasn't even been close. We should break here. Nice. All right, we also have this untouched. So maybe something like into here. Hesitate. Come back up. Eventually, I want us to see us get through that. Use it as an inversion. Then get into this one. That'd be like the ideal delivery if we're going to get into here. All right, we could obviously get stopped. Run back for these highs. Because I don't ever like this type of delivery as we go lower, right? The stair stepper, I like to call it, where it's down, back up, down, back up, down, right? We're holding highs because eventually all these highs that have been left behind are, are going to get violated. So when we start delivering like this, right, I really want to see price aggressively break so we don't linger around all these highs. Because if we continue to linger around all these highs, I think we come back up for them. And the fact that this candle simply wicked these lows, yeah. Do we reverse? We might reverse it. Let's see. Let's reverse it. Oh my gosh, I'm too slow. That's comedy. Now if we go back in there, we'll reverse it. Keep going. Just demo ball the rest of the night, the day. Oh, too slow again. I'm talking too much. Let's see if that volume and balance doesn't want to hold. Brutal fill. That's that paper trade fill, though. <laughs> Expected. <laughs> I want to see a close above these levels. Let's get a close. Yeah, that's nice there. Oh, two minute though, not. Ba 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 boo ha. Yeah, we'll see what happens here, and then we'll probably call it a day. Win or lose. And all of this in here, in my mind, is lower probability because we've already hit our objective. 
and that's why I'm in the demo environment. Right for me, the higher probability trades really come, even as Michael says, in the meat of the move, right? So while the move is already occurring, that's really when I find most of the high probability entries. Because it's always nice to like catch a low, right? Total soup or even like right inversion catch a low like this. But those higher probabilities really come in the center of the leg because price has already really shown, right, what it's reaching for. And it's fallen short of liquidity. So like seeing something like this, right, it's obvious that price is going to want to reach for highs. Right, same reason we got in over here. Whereas now when we hit liquidity like this, right, it's nice to be able to catch like a top. But a lot of times, especially today, price is just going to consolidate like we're seeing around a liquidity pool. But right, notice how the two minute, so we still haven't even closed above the old high. Right? That's not very uh, beneficial for the idea of longs. Same with the five, right? It's all wicks. Just wick, wick, wick. One minute's the only one that's really confirmed it, but you notice how, right, we don't spend really any time in here. As soon as we close, immediate rejection, where? Back underneath. So right there, right there again, right, just another signature of high resistance to where even if we do want to keep running, right, it's so high resistance. High resistance, low probability. Let's try this though, right? Oops. Since we are just demo balling, let's see if we don't want to use the volume imbalance we formed as another form of support now. Right, so if we get even one tick into that, we'll just add. I mean, look at that, fellas. Look at that. Very random delivery to a random level with random closes. We didn't want to give it. Still got time though. We'll go. If we get back into this, we'll add one more even. But right, geez, just that consolidation. Once again, right? We close above it, but what do we do? Immediately reject. Ideally, though, this stays open. I'm like, we need another target to aim for. So, right, so you can really see this give and take, right? So even say this is a winner, right? These are the trades that I don't even like winning. Because <laughs> moving like this is just not fun for anybody. Like how many times have we tried to get above the high, try to get above these levels and the immediate rejection, right? So these are the 
days and the deliveries that just drain your mental capital if you're not understanding what's going on. It's like if we close underneath this, right, we're going to close most of the position. Let's see. We close right on it. I think we still run out. We'll just let my stop get hit, whatever. The right, great example. So boom, there we go. Another stop. Even after running in profit a little bit. But you see how, right, these PD arrays, once we hit important areas like this, it's just a lot more jumbled. And you can obviously, right, it's very obvious to see how this move here, like, let me just clear out. Right, this main move, so after clearing out the low, the move up to run the buy side, right, clean. Entries here, right, volume and balance entries here. Still a little consolidation, but it's rather, right, one-sided. Whereas as soon as we hit that, right, so we've hit it here, what's happened since then, right? Down, up, down, up, right? I think we're going up, back down. So now we're just consolidating. And that's why I usually, right, after I have a good winner, just call it a day. Don't allow yourself to continue to trade, really. I still have those Apex accounts, but I'm not really using them too much. I got to see what they're at. Let me see. Oh my, I got so many different, because I have the pops up ones too. I'm just kind of fucking with them. I have, let's see, Apex, Apex. Oh yeah, I still do actually have. So I have 200K account that's, damn, I got to trade this one. I forgot I even had this one. So I'm up 103,254. So I need another, what is that? 3K, I think. And then those are two 100Ks. Then yeah, I have a 150K account one too. <laughs> Fell too short of the buy side. Oof, brother. All right, fellas, I think we're going to wrap this one up this morning, though. Seems like I'll probably just consolidate around the old high. Right, we did get a, kind of what we were looking for. So we had three trades in total, two break-evens, right? One winner, as we saw here. Finally getting up into that buy side we were looking for. As far as the day went, went kind of a, I'd say it went pretty well, according to script, right? At first, we wanted to see... Buy side get ran without a Judas swing. That happens. Right, then looked for the sell side to be hit. We got short into it. Right, so nice shorts using the inversion to get short into the sell side. And then we came back up into that fair value gap we were looking for. So had to pick up stops first. Right, went up to go down just to go back up. But as of now, I think we might consolidate into the uh, 11 o'clock hour so if you guys have any questions go ahead and send them my way quickly before we wrap up this morning session start cleaning up some mess Mm-hmm. 
So at this point, I guess I don't really have any bias because my objective right was this for value gap. Like we spoke about, wanted to see price in the short term, respect discounts like it did to get up into it. Now that we have hit it, I'll just need to wait and uh, let price play out the rest of the day. Come back tomorrow, figure out what we uh, want to do. I would prefer, right, ultimately, I'd like to see price kind of venture lower from here. All right, so I wanted to see us go up first into the fair value gap and then come back down. So my longer term macro perspective still is I would favor sell side targets over buy side. Especially how we're holding this now. I like to see that. All right, bodies telling story. We're wicking into the uh, premiums, but the bodies are refusing to even close above this swing point. So I do like that. So yeah, going forward, if you're chilling here this afternoon or uh, looking to engage, I would favor setups to look for lower prices. Give you guys kind of a roadmap. Right, midnight level I like. That's always a classic go-to for me. So maybe some into the midnight at least, right? Like I said, this February gap here kind of has my attention just because it's untouched. It's right near that midnight level. And like, let's say I ran a fib from low to high, right? It's right underneath the uh, equilibrium as well. A lot of things lining up. But yeah, we'll leave you with that. Obviously, right, if we keep running higher, just to give you the opposing thing. So I want lower prices, but if we do end up getting above, like, right, and start closing above these levels with candle bodies, then I just think that uh, Friday's midnight level and then the 15-minute consequent encroachment that we've been, right, so the fair value gap that we're looking at, you have the midpoint and then you have the midnight level if we're going to venture higher. So two kind of targets to be aiming for. Cool. But yeah, we'll wrap it up there. Let me just double check tomorrow for news. High impact news at uh, 8.30. So we'll let that play out. And then we'll just come back same time we did today. So we'll be on slightly before the equities open. Right around 9.25 or so Eastern time. But yeah, until then, appreciate you guys sitting in this morning. Have a good rest of your Monday. And we will get back to action tomorrow morning. See you guys around.